Hi everybody, we are ready for another set of notes in Unit 5, so go ahead and flip to our Unit 5 table of contents. Looks like we are ready for page 51, and we're still working on solving quadratics. It's just the last method that I need to show you. So solving quadratics, and we're going to focus on using the quadratic formula today. So you may have to write small. Once you get that written down, here are the notes. So you're just going to fold them and type them down on 51. So go ahead, pause this video and get that taken care of now. And then when you're done, push play. Okay, so your notes should be taped in now. So today's topic, we are talking about solving quadratics still. So we're looking for where does the graph cross the x-axis, trying to solve some equations and get x equals at the end. How we're going to actually do that today is with the quadratic formula. So it's a pretty standard formula. You just plug in numbers and use it. As we go through some of these examples, I'm going to explain why we need to have the quadratic formula. So to start, here's the formula. So formula, this is it. So I'm going to read through it. I know it looks terrible, but it's really not that bad. So x equals, then we read the top first. So this is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now again, I know it looks terrible, but it's really not that bad because really it's just a, b, and c values that you're plugging in. And then you can use your calculator to help you for the rest of it. So this method of solving can be used on any trinomial any trinomial that you have, you can use the quadratic formula. That's why the quadratic formula is awesome to know. You can use it on any trinomial you want. The only thing, you have to be able to identify the A, B, and C values. And the reason is, we have to plug in those A, B, and C values up here. So you got to be able to identify what those are. I have one little reminder right here that the equation needs to look like it's got to be in that form. So we got to have our three terms on the left side equal zero. So if it doesn't look like that, you just fix it, which there is a problem in this notes that's like that. So the first thing that we need to do when we look at number one is identify our A, B, and C values. Our trinomial looks normal. All of the A, B, and C values are on the left side, so I can go ahead and start. So I'm just gonna make a little list, A, B, and C, and then I'm going to actually write out what they are. So my A value is a positive three, B is negative 2. Make sure that you grab whatever sign is in front of it. And then our C value is negative 4. So I've used colors to hopefully show you where to plug it in. So now that we have our A, B, and C values, all you have to do is use the quadratic formula up here and plug in the numbers where they're actually supposed to go. So this first part is a little tedious, but it's, it's worth it. So we're going to have X equals... And then you legit just read the formula, plug in the numbers where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to try to show you both. So we got negative. And then every time we plug in a number, remember, we always use parentheses. So I'm going to plug in B right there. So that's going to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root. Then we got that B again. So I'm going to plug in a B right there. So negative 2 minus four in parentheses. I went ahead and put two parentheses because I'm plugging in A and then C. So A is three. C is going to be negative four. And then all of that is going to be over two times A, which is three. Truthfully, that's the hardest part. The hardest part is memorizing the quadratic formula and knowing where to plug stuff in. From here, all you do is simplify, and you can do that with your calculator so it makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to work to simplify it. So I'm just going to bring down that x equals. And then always, always, always start on the top. So I've got negative, negative 2. Two negatives like that make a positive. So I've got positive 2. Bring down that plus or minus. And I'm going to bring down my square root. The thing that I'm going to simplify first is the stuff inside that 
square root. So use your calculator because it'll go by a lot faster. We're gonna type in negative two squared. So I'm just typing in what I have written underneath that square root. So if you look, all I did was type in exactly what I had under there. So that number is gonna be 52. And all of that's gonna be over two times three, which is six. Okay, so we have it simplified. Now we have to address that plus or minus. We've talked about this before. That plus or minus just means that there are technically two numbers sitting there. We've got one with a positive and then one with a negative. So we're gonna split it up so that way we can actually get both of them. So it's two plus square root of 52 over six. This one is gonna be the same thing, but it's gonna be two minus square root of 52 over six. Then I'm gonna utilize my calculator again. I'm gonna show you guys a quick little trick with this calculator because this is a fraction and this calculator actually will do a fraction. You just have to be shown where it is. So on this calculator, on the TI-84s, if you click alpha, the green button, so alpha, y equals, and click enter, it gives you that fraction that you guys are used to in middle school. So again, alpha, y equals, and then click enter, and then there it is. So now all you have to do is type in exactly what you have on your paper. So two plus square root of 52 over six, click enter. If it gives you a decimal, that is okay. Just make sure you round appropriately. I always like the nearest hundredths, so if you're doing stuff for me, go with the nearest hundredths. So nearest hundredths, I'm looking at that three. It has a five chilling behind it, so I'm gonna have that three round up. So this one is gonna be, X is approximately 1.54. Okay, and then I just do the same thing to the other one. So alpha Y equals, click enter, to minus the square root of 52 over six. And that gives me another decimal, which remember it is okay. This time, my decimal, I'm looking at that six, look behind it, so that six is gonna become a seven. And there we go. That's how you use the quadratic formula. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is flip to the inside. I've got three problems in there. I want you guys to work on number one first. It's very, very similar to the first one that we did on the front. The thing that I want you to focus on is making sure that you plug in the numbers where they're supposed to be, use parentheses around the numbers, and try your best to simplify correctly. Make sure you take time to plug in those numbers. They've got to be in the right spots. Okay, so go ahead, take a few minutes, try to do at least one and two, and then when you get one and two done, you can push play and I'll show you what the correct answers are. So y'all get that started for me. Here are the correct answers for one and two on the inside. So what I went and did was I tried to use color so that way when you looked over here, you could easily spot like which letters are which. But the same idea, you plug it in, make sure that you have parentheses around it, and then your first goal is to simplify the number on the inside of that square root, so I did, and then I split it up and then used my calculator from there. You're always gonna have a calculator when you run into these types of problems. So we should have got nine over two and negative seven. If your calculator gives you a fraction, then leave it as a fraction, okay? And then here's number two, same thing though. I simplified that stuff on the inside, which gave me 156. And then from there I split it up and I used my calculator. I happened to get decimals this time and I just rounded to the nearest hundredth, okay? I wanted to do number three together with you so I didn't actually do that one. So the first thing that I notice when I look at number three is that the equation itself is not equal to zero. That's something that we have to fix immediately. So in order to fix it, you just do the inverse operation. So that's a positive six. So to make it go away, I need to subtract six. So now this side is gonna be zero. And then I'm gonna have I've got to put that minus six somewhere. I can't actually combine it with those because those are not like terms. So instead, that's going to be my C value. 
So I'm gonna have 3x squared minus 3x minus six equals zero. And then now it looks normal and I can move forward, okay? So we're still solving with the quadratic formula, so I need you to label out your a, b, and c values. So my a value is a positive three, b value is negative three, c value is negative six. Make sure you're paying attention to the signs in front of it. And then from there, I just plug in all of my numbers into the quadratic formula. So we're gonna start with x equals the negative b. So I went ahead and put parentheses and then now I'm gonna plug in that negative three into that space. So I've got negative three plus or minus the square root. And there's that b again. So I've got parentheses squared, I gotta plug in the b in there. Minus four times a times c. So you're gonna notice that when I'm doing these, I'm putting the parentheses, and then now I just have to go back through there and put, this is an a, so it's gotta be a three. This one is a c, so it's gotta be negative six. All over two times a. And then my a value again is three. It is extremely important, I cannot emphasize that enough, it's extremely important that you take your time when you're plugging in these numbers so that way your calculator will know and do the right work, okay? So then we just simplify it a little bit before we use our calculator. So the first thing I always look at is this first number up here. Those are two negatives, so that's going to be a positive 3 plus or minus. I'm going to bring down that square root because i got to simplify all that stuff underneath it. And that's where my calculator comes in. So I'm gonna do negative three squared minus four times three times negative six. Gives me 81. All over two times three, it's gonna give me a six. Now we need to deal with that square, or not the square root, that plus or minus symbol, sorry. So this is going to be x equals 3 plus the square root of 81 over 6. And this one's going to be the same thing, just minus. And then you use your calculator. So again, to get to a fraction, it's going to be the alpha key, which is green. So alpha, y equals. So there's my little fraction. And now I just need to type in what I need. So 3 plus square root of 81 over 6 gives me 2. And then do the same thing. 3 minus square root of 81 over 6 gives me a negative 1. And there we go. That's all there is to it. So again, I want to just recap real quick what we actually know. When you are given a quadratic equation, we have three methods. First one is factoring. Second one is square roots. Third one is formula. Now, a lot of times, People don't actually use the formula unless the first two don't work. Because remember, like I said in the beginning, if you get to a problem like this one, and you go, like you try to factor it like normal, and you draw your little X puzzle, and you figure out that it doesn't work, your only option is to do the quadratic formula. Because every now and then you're going to run into one that doesn't factor. So that's why we have to know the quadratic formula. But... The more you use it, the better you will be with it, I promise. I'm really proud of you guys, and I'll see you next time.